Hi, my name is Mike Beckley. I operate fly tying worldwide under the name Dead Guy Fly. I have accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and um, I even enter my name as Dead Guy Fly when I go to shows. I've been tying fly since I'm about 12 years old. I'm currently 43, so I have a little bit of experience. Uh, November 2018, I threw my hat in the ring, <clears throat> excuse me, for to become a commercial fly tire, and I'm about six months in now. So, brief introduction. Um, thanks for watching. If you are an experienced tire, I want to apologize ahead of time. I am going to tie the, or tie this fly and um, narrate this video for someone with very basic knowledge and skills in fly tying. Um, maybe, maybe a little annoying for you guys, but. There's a couple of people that ask for lessons, and due to geographic locations and time restraints, I can't always get on site to help people out in person. So once I get the basic skills down, um, I figure this could be a tool not only for them, but it could help me promote my business and it could help share with the fly time community um, anything that I may or may not know. Or hey, with the comment section, you guys could tell me on some things I need to brush up on myself. So the fly in the vise is basically just a rendition of a Walt Eddy coffin fly. The only thing I did different, actually I did a couple of things different. I used moose for a tail, I used olive for a body, and I used, I believe that's golden badger for the wing. Um, traditionally it's a white fly with a pe peccary body, or apologize, a peccary tail a white body, and silver badger hackle. But I was asked to do a fly for a display, and it was going to be against the white background. So this is what I came up with, just fooling around. And I posted it on Facebook, and a couple people commented on it. And I figured, what better way to get my feet wet with my videos on YouTube than I'll just start this one right away, because there is already some interest in the fly. So I'm going to take this out, and we'll get started. <clears throat> the hook I'm using is a size 10 TMC 5212 1x fine 2x long um, it's a terrestrial or a hopper or a stonefly hook however due to the size of the green drakes we want to go with a bigger fly and we need that 1 and 2x to accommodate the size of this fly. So we're going to start our thread on. Mm, I'm going to say about a quarter of the way down the eye. Normally it's a third, but the long shank's not going to make that possible. For the wing, I'm using teal. I already stripped these back a little bit. I found a couple of nice barred ones. I'm going to give them a shot. And I'm going to use two wings. Um, the way you want to attach two wings on a Catskill style dry. You could use this for March Browns, you could use it for coffin flies, green drakes, yellow drakes, anything that you need to make big, you can use two feathers. Um, and the way you do that is you put the faces together and you want to line your tips up. I'm going to try and do this straddling this camera. And you want to tie these in on their sides. A little too much of a pinch. You can actually see I'm starting to want to separate there. The thread I'm using today is a UTC 70 in black. So normally you would make it one hook shank long for the wing. Um, you can do that depending on what you want to do proportion wise and how big you want to make the fly. Sometimes I do that, <clears throat> but I think today, just for hackle reasons and, and not to blow too many people's minds with proportions, we're going to go somewhat, we're going to measure the length of the hook, and we're just going to back it off just a little bit. And it'll just make these things easier, instead of having a big, huge wing sitting up there. We'll go a little longer. You want to try and keep those fibers and those wing materials on their sides and on top of the hook shank. You want to get three or four good bites before you start moving back. And 
if you can keep those fibers on top of that hook, you can see, let me move my vise a little bit, you can see they already want to start separating, which is going to make splitting your wings a whole lot easier. I will move the camera, I'm sorry, I will move the vise around as we go, just to try and give you guys a better look. When you trim that off, I'm sure you've seen this before, pull the feather straight back, put your scissor on an angle, give her a snip. That'll fill in your body, which a lot of people may think that's a lot of material on a fly this big, and with the body we're going to put on it, it's really not a lot. But, well, I'm still rolling on the hook. There's a lot of material on there. We'll straighten that out. Ooh. Line that back. And there's your taper for your, your body down the road. Stand these wings up. Just want to pull straight back. Want to advance your hook or your thread in front of the wing and build up a nice thread down. If you're using a flat thread such as UTC, don't be shy with that thread. We're not tying a sparse flick style fly. We're tying a big meaty green drake in a size 10. So don't be afraid to build that up. Down the road, I'll explain to you why I do that as well. And if you're a new tire, thread control is probably the most important thing to learn. However, Getting your materials to work and manipulate the way you need them is probably more important than thread control at this point in the game. So that stands up pretty good. Still leaning a little bit of forward. We're going to still probably build that dam up a little bigger when we get to the hackle. And also the hackle will help hold that up. But you got a lot of material there. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our vise a little bit if you're able to. Not all vices are able to do that. I'm on the Regal Pro staff. I love Regal Vices, um, and fortunately for me, they they turn, and they're really easy to work with. Come in, run some figure eights. Now, the reason I said keeping your material on top of your hook, Shank, when you're tying that wing in, is because it makes the splitting process so much easier. I'm going to build that dam up again. And I'm going to go back through and check things out. So, being that you're not pulling materials from the side of the hook, from the bottom of the hook, everything kind of winds up really nice. It can keep your trimming almost down to nothing. A lot of people would put a scissor in there and trim that out now. I'm not going to do that. I am going to give it a couple of wraps, almost like I'm posting a parachute. I'll give it three loose wraps. I'll come around the back side and I'll give that an anchor point. Then I'll come around the other side. Three little wraps. Across the, across the top of the hook shank. And I'll anchor that down. And those wings are standing up pretty nice. They're not going anywhere. We'll check it for... For being on the center of the hook and having a nice layout. And I think we're doing pretty good there. These are fishing flies, so you don't have to make them perfect. Um, I think everybody likes a pretty fly, myself included. So, for demonstration purposes, I will try and do as pretty of a job as I can for you guys. And you'll think I actually have an idea or a clue about what I'm doing. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. We'll give our bobbin a counterclockwise spin. Try and get that thread to lay even more flat. You can actually, I guess you could see it, how flat that actually lays. And we'll come back and we'll touch our turns. As the wise man Dave McPhail said. And we'll advance our thread to the back of the hook shank. I'm gonna leave it there, right, even with the point. Proportion is important if you're going to do a lot of flies. makes you a little more consistent. Excuse me. Plus, starting and stopping points 
Um, just make you a better tire when you learn what you're doing. The tail, the last tail I used was moose. I am gonna use peccary as the original pattern called for. And I'm just gonna use three peccary fibers. If you're not sure what peccary is, most places have it. It's extremely inexpensive. I think you could probably get a pack for two or three bucks. This is a great, it's almost like a boar hair. Um, very stiff, very brittle. For tailing, it's fantastic. For parachutes and dry flies, well, there's a little trick to do with it. And no, it's not soaking them. And maybe down the road, we'll do that. But it's been around for a long time. I see people just have a lot more interest in it recently. So we're going to go with peccary. Now, this is a stiff, hollow hair. So it can give you a little bit of... Uh, issues working with it. I'm going to go with hook shank length. Yes, it is a 2x or 3x long hook, but I like my tails on my mayflies long. Some people may disagree, but I don't see many mayflies with short tails. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to make it just a little longer. With this peccary, you want to get a couple loose wraps. Almost like you're wrapping deer hair. A couple loose wraps just to secure it in and get everything lined up nice. And as you come back, start cranking down a little bit. On this particular fly, you don't really have to worry too much about body thickness and taper as you would, say, a March Brown or a Red Quill. And I'll show you why in a couple minutes. But I am going to try and get somewhat close. We'll keep that tight. If you keep your flies tight and neat as you're tying, um, A, it makes you practice without even realizing you're practicing, and B, it just uh, it makes things look a whole lot nicer in the end. We're going to split these tails. Uh, Camera-wise, let me see what I can do for you guys. So we're going to shoot one off, and we go with 45-degree angles. I'm making that up. I don't know what they say. But just so you can see it and you know what's going on, we're going to shoot one off to the right, one off to the left, and we're going to leave one in the center. And we're going to bring our thread back. The first loop is going to go loose and secure that one off. Second one, now this is a pain. I'm going to come around the outside one, and that's going to want to cinch that middle fiber down. So then with your hands, just stand that up really quick and get a loose wrap of thread underneath there. Pull it tight, and they splay out really nice. You can come over with a loose wrap on top, just for a little bit of guidance. And there, we're pretty good. I don't know if I can get, well, you can kind of see them on an angle there. It's kind of hard seeing that middle one there, but I'm guessing we could see it. We'll zoom back out here. Now we can start tying our body materials in. So, the first thing we're gonna tie in is a piece of olive hackle. You can use saddle hackle, you can use schlappen, you can use whatever, and that is an olive color. I don't have a lot of colored hackles, so I'm using a whiting American that I use for my Rangeley streamers. This is just a small feather off the bottom of, excuse me, off the bottom of the cape. And I already took the liberty of stripping off one side. And oh, let's do that really quick. Hang on a second. Being that we're really only <clears throat> worried about one side of the fly, the top side, and this feather is really only going to be used to rib and define the segmentation. What you'll want to do, depending on what hand you tie with. I tie right-handed, so I'm going to pull the fibers off the right side of the hook. Or the right side of the, the stem. You want to try and find something with a fairly skinny stem on it. And you're left with that. Being that that's going to get in the way when we're wrapping up our body. I have a pair of Dr. Slick big deer hair scissors. I just come in and... There's no rhyme or reason how short I go. We're going to go much shorter on that. 
So that's how I prepare that. Being that that's going to be the last thing we're going to wrap up our body, we want to tie that in first. And I already have one done, so I'm going to use that one. So you want to tie this in. Let me put my glasses back on. As you're tying a dry fly hackle. Shoot it off on a little bit of an angle. Get a good bite. And then leave a little space in there. What that's going to do is line up really nice when you do start to wind. It is going to be a little difficult to get it on there tight. And that's okay. And I'll show you why. Next thing we're going to use... Just a piece of olive poly fluff, poly yarn. If you have something else, this is the thin stuff. This isn't exactly the, the stuff for winging parachutes. You can use it for that on smaller ones. You'll need you'll need to double, triple, quadruple it up. But this is all I'm going to use. Uh, Walt Eddy on the original one used white, and he used the white hackle. So regular coffin fly. Really, same exact thing. I just put a different color variation on it, which is great because the profile is fantastic. It's a proven fly. It's a Catskills traditional fly tied by a legend. Um, so if you have yellow drakes, if you have green drakes, if you have gray drakes, you can use this fly for many different uh, species or, or mayfly imitations. Just change your colors up however you need it. It's kind of like a one fly does it all. And it's, you know, it's traditional and it's cool. So, go Catskills. No, I lost my poly fluff. Okay, so I just cut off way too much. I have about a 10-inch piece here. I do wet it. Because it's just easier to handle. And I'll tie it in right on top of the hook shank. And I'll look really close. I'll try and get it back as far as I can to where the thread stopped or started on that tail fiber. And we just want to work our material on top of the hook and bind that down with the thread. And that's why that hackle fiber being so loose, or the hackle stem, didn't really matter at that point. Look at the girth on this fly. It's enormous. But without cranking that down and making it too tight, there's still plenty of thread wraps on there to hold that in place. I'm actually going to back off. I'm going to trim those. And then I'll continue forward. Hackle-wise, on a fly like this, I like to put a lot of hackle on it. And I actually rushed ahead on that, but I'm going to show you why that could be a good thing in this application. Okay, real simple stuff. Get a good tight pull on your poly fluff. And just wrap that body. Normally I would use white thread, but I had black in here and that's what we're going to go with. End over end, try and keep it flat. So try not to spin it as you're, as you're tying it. Keep it nice and flat, end over end, switch hands, come on up in, and tie it off. Even though I tried to make the body look really nice and slim tapered, the sheen on this material is going to show every imperfection. Could I work on it if it was a display fly? Well, sure. But that's not what we're doing here. I'm just going to come in and we're going to cut that off. And there's really no reason to cover that up right now. We will tighten it up in a second fun part. What I do, being that they're lined up straight, we did leave a little space in there, although very little. So I apologize. I usually make it bigger than that. What I do is I come straight over on a 90. Or actually, oh, I'm sorry, a 180. Make sure it's standing straight up, but come over. And that puts a nice kink in that hackle stem. It's a thick hackle. You're not going to break it. I mean, I won't go reefing on it. And I come up. And this is really up to you. You want wide segmentation? Go for it. I like to leave about a sixteenth of an inch, but then 
I had the opportunity to see one of Walt's flies that he tied in the 70s. And wow, his were really close together and they were really short to the body. So I only saw one. I didn't know him personally um, or I didn't inquire if that was a norm. I will in the future. I just run that right up. This feather's a little short, so I may actually have to go back and rewrap that. Let me see if I can get a pair of pliers on there and make it work. I just might be able to squeak it out. And I got my fat dumb skin in there too. <laughs> okay. Let's just do that over. Okay, here we go. And we're going to space it out just a little more this time. Just so I can make sure I, I get it going. If you want to, you can make this top saddle or this top feather any color you want for segmentation reasons. I'm going with green because, like I said, initially it was a display fly. And the gentleman that wanted it um, wanted it to really pop on a black background or a white background. So... Even when I put whiter, lighter colors on it, it just didn't have that pop that he was looking for. So I went with green. I can tell you when I tie a yellow drake, I'm going to use a wood duck feather. And I'm going to use a dun hackle. And I'm going to use a yellow poly body. So very versatile fly. And the green drake's on my stream, which if it was daylight out, I'd even zoom down on it for you. It's really close to my house. Uh, a lot of sand came in with the storms the last couple of years. And... We get a really prolific yellow drake hatch here, so I can't wait to tie some up. <clears throat> I did rush the head there a little bit. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, let's do this. Let's trim this. And I just come straight across. If you choose to taper it, that's on you. Whatever you, whatever you prefer, whatever suits your looks and your needs. Um... I don't have a whole lot of these under my belt, so maybe as I go and get a little more competition tied, <laughs> uh, I'll try and do something a little different just to set them, set them off a little bit. And this is kind of tedious. I know for video reasons, it's probably like watching paint dry, but we're going to do it. And you know, if you don't want to see it, you're probably already turned it off by now. Make sure your thread's out of the way. I didn't, and that's what made me look at the last second there. <laughs> They're not going to be perfect. And if you can get the room in there and the clearance on your vise to allow you to get them perfect, more power to you. I know just having this camera to straddle, I can't do that. Sorry about my big thumbs. Okay, we're going to go with that right now. We're going to leave that alone. I think that looks, you know, half decent. You could probably sit there and go around and around and around and around, and eventually you'll settle. So, one thing I want to touch on, and if you're already a pretty, pretty good tire, you already picked up on it. Um, we always talk about bulk on flies. Normally... I would never leave that much material behind my wing to attach my hackle to. That's almost as thick as the body, and it's running downhill. It's huge. It's a huge no-no nine times out of ten. The reason I did it on this fly was because it is a size 10. It is so long, and if you don't have capes and you have a lot of saddles like I do, good luck finding saddles long enough to cover that fly. So what I found out was I have a wing that's pretty high. It's not overpowering or, or too big. If I build that up just a little bit, that hackle rides higher. And guess what? It makes me look like I have at least a half, half an idea of what I'm doing. And I also do that on the front of the hook. Now, this was a short piece of... This is um, Golden Badger Whiting. I think this is the Herbert line. So I was really lucky to find one this long. If this hackle doesn't work on this fly, I have backup. I have a silver badger whiting. Um, 
and a Euro hackle. So if we can't get this one to work, which I really want to use the golden, we'll get the, the silver hackle to work, the silver badger. I already stripped one side off. I have a habit of doing that on all my flies. Kind of a waste of money, but I just think it looks nicer. You'll come in, and B and I have so much bulk behind my wing already. I'm not gonna go crazy. Cover my stem up. I'm gonna flip my wing around. I'm gonna do the same in the front. What that does is it builds bulk in the front. Three reasons I do that. One, if you've seen any of my live videos, if you leave a small bed of thread, look at that scissor. If you leave a small bed of thread and it has a taper, actually it would be like this. What do you think your hackle is going to do as you wrap that? It's going to run downhill and it's going to start shooting off on all different angles and it's going to look like crap. And you're not going to be happy and you're not going to be proud of your work and it's going to frustrate the hell out of you. So when you build that head up, you straighten it out and guess what? It's just like when you're wrapping a parachute post. You want it even. You want it nice. You want it smooth. And what that'll do is it'll allow those hackle fibers to lay, or the hackle stem to lay on there, wrap nicely, and those little fibers will shoot off like soldiers. It's a prettier fly. It's a better floating fly. And a, a little confidence builder for, for the tire itself. Now, this is still shooting on somewhat of a slope, but, I mean, I have to come to terms, and I can only go so much. I just hope this hackle's long enough. I do the same thing I do my dry fly hackle as I did with the stem in the back. I get that stem nice and loose, and this is a big, long hackle, and hopefully this works. I'm just gonna touch turns, try and keep it nice and tight in there. And on a hackle this big, I don't know if you're gonna get them to stand up that perfect. This is probably a size eight saddle. So I'm gonna have to put my hackle pliers on this even, just to finish off this fly. And then they're gonna slip, and it's gonna unwrap, and I'm gonna look like an idiot. But that's fly tying. Same thing, don't twist your hackle. You pull your wing fiber back out of the way, nice and gentle. Try and keep your turns together. And I am probably going to over-hackle this fly. A, because I have the room. And B, it's such a big fly. It needs needs a big profile. It needs a big float rate or a high float rate. And it needs somewhat decent balance. So I am going to rush my head a little bit. So we got that on there. And surprisingly enough, it covered. I'm just going to come in. And I'm going to get one secure wrap on there. Actually, I'm going to get two on there. And I'm going to move that camera for you guys. I'll try and do that. And I can't twist it too much. but Okay, so I got two good wraps on there. I'm going to move my hackle back, my stem back. I'm going to give it two more wraps. I've gotten in a habit recently when doing dry flies of securing with at least one, well, whatever you want, whip finish or half hitch. Reason being, how many times did a whip finisher or half hitch not take, you lost your thread, you lost your hackle, and you had to redo it. And then your hackle has kinks in it and lines in it. And I know they say if you want it nice, do it twice, but I'd rather not. I'd rather do it twice on another fly. I'm gonna come in there nice and tight, give it a little trim. And I came a little long on that, but I don't think the fish will mind it. One product I am new to, I'm not sponsored by them, but it's new. Solarez Bone Dry. I just picked this up a week and a half ago. I love it. It's just a little more consistency than water. Or viscosity or consistency, I'm not really sure what you say there. Just a little thicker than water. How's that? Nice brush on it. Coat your thread. I am very liberal with this stuff because a half ounce will probably last me a decade. And I 
I'll get a couple wraps on there with my half hitch, or I'm sorry, I keep on saying half hitch with my whip finisher. We'll go with a three count, I guess. One, two, three. We'll pull that off. We'll give that a tug. We'll get in there and give it a cut. For any of you that have never tied straddling a camera, I dare you to try it. It really sucks. Okay, we're going to go 10 seconds on our light. Approximately, I don't know. I'll show you a couple of things too before I finish the fly. Essentially, we are done. Um, and that one actually tied pretty clean. But I did this on a YouTube video, or I'm sorry, a Facebook video. And <clears throat> I'll tell you guys as well here. A lot of times when you hackle a fly, You'll get some, let's let's take this one for example, it's shooting back a little bit. No, I'm not going to address that. But if you ever need to clean up your hackle, well, I know a lot of people say, oh, just get in there and trim it. Don't do that. All you do is miss and hit other hackles and not worth it. Grab your hackle and get a good set of pliers and just pull it right out the stem. You get in there and start trimming. You'll drive yourself crazy. You're going to finger up your fly. Excuse me, you're going to crush everything. Just get a good pair of tweezers. Pull them out if they bother you that much. I assure you the fish don't care. And I'm telling you what, I'm pretty happy that the way that fly came out. There's a side or the top profile. I guess I could have probably peeled back a little more there, but we're going to leave that alone. We'll come right around. Remove the camera. There's your tails. A couple of times throughout the video, I adjusted the tails. So when you shoot them out there on that angle, they don't stick out there. Eventually, every material that we use has memory. You can glue it down. You can lash it down. But eventually, it will return. And, um, you know, now I'm squeezing it together, and it's still flaring out. So that little bit of securing that we did, listen, oh, oh, even a tailing loop that's coming 100 miles an hour isn't going to make those those hackles or those tail fibers come together. So, I hope you like my video. It's my first for YouTube. Uh, if you do, you can give me a like, you can give me a share, you can give me a comment, and I'll tell you what, I'm a rookie and you can't hurt my feelings. So if there's any suggestions, feel free to fire them at me. Once again, thanks for watching. I apologize it was a 33-minute video on a dry fly, but I hope that someday it helps somebody out. Everybody have a good night, and I'll see you around. Thank you.